So this video is going to be about how to use uh, any of our grey kits. Today we're working with one of our Golden Oyster kits, but this process will work for any of our kits. So if, if you happen to have one of our Pink Oyster kits, Grey Oyster kits, or one of our Lion's Mane kits as well, uh, yeah, it's exactly the same process. Really straightforward, really simple to use, and I'll just go over everything that you need to know really about getting the most out of one of our grey kits. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background. My name is Patrick. Uh, I run Upcycled Mushrooms, which you probably know if you're watching this video because you come to have a come and have a look at one of our grey kits or you've brought one of our grey kits and you want to find out how to use it. Um, so our kits are made from really sustainable materials. We try to keep everything as eco as possible. Um, the ingredients inside are all organic um, and, or, and or locally sourced as well. Uh, quite often we use a lot of uh, waste streams from uh, whole food suppliers and stuff like that as well to try and use up uh, these materials that wouldn't necessarily be able to be used for food otherwise, but due to the processing that we put them through, so essentially we have to sterilize the uh, uh, ingredients inside the kit to make them work for the mushrooms. Uh, they're totally safe to do so, so we can end up using up a lot of um, like waste, uh, wheat bran and things like that from other suppliers. Um, but generally we always use uh, organic ingredients regardless of whether they're waste streams or not. And we just try to prioritize using waste stream if we can get hold of it. Um, so yeah, when you get your kit, this is what it will look like. Again, it's exactly the similar kit, no matter what species it is that you've gone for. So lions may just be a slightly different artwork slightly different design on the front, but same principle, uh, reasonably pretty much the same grey kit as well. Um, yeah, uh, so to start off with, usually uh, we're gonna just begin by removing this window here. So you see on the front of your kit, when you get it, there'll be a perforated window and you just, you just put your finger in the window and pull the window open, like so. Behind it, you should see that there is a kind of bag with some rather white looking stuff behind it. So this is mycelium and this is essentially part of the mushroom culture. So when you're looking at a mushroom culture in the wild, when you find a mushroom, you're actually only seeing the reproductive organ of this whole organism. So what exists uh, when, for example, if you're finding a mushroom on a log, is that this mycelium is living inside the log. So essentially what we are doing with this kit is we're trying to create um, we essentially trick the mushroom into thinking that it's living on a log. So inside the kit, we have a mixture of sawdust and some wheat bran as well. Obviously wheat bran isn't in logs in the wild, but we put additional supplements into the kit so that we can get bigger yields for you. Uh, so you get more mushrooms essentially from the size of the kit. But so essentially it's like a log that we're tricking them into that's inside a bag. Now mushrooms have some very um, specific uh, criteria for them to actually produce the fruiting body. Now the fruiting body is essentially the mushrooms, what you would know as the mushroom, but when we're talking about this whole organism, we need to define which bit. So this is the mycelium of the organism, and now we're gonna talk about the fruiting body. So essentially we need to try to trigger this mushroom into fruiting, and the way to do that is that we create uh, an opening for where it can grow out of, but also what happens through that process is we now allow oxygen to hit this edge of this mycelial edge here, which in turn is one of the main triggers for it to be able to fruit. Other triggers include humidity and light as well. So really simply, we are gonna cut an X into this bag. It really doesn't matter if you cut some of the mycelium as well, it kind of heals back together very quickly within a couple of days. So really not an issue. Kids, if you're doing this, make sure you get some help from an adult as well. Um, I've got a scalpel for doing this with, but it would also work with a sharp kitchen knife as well. And what you essentially want to do is just cut an X like that. So one side there and one side there. And what that does is it opens up and exposes this edge of the mycelium here to air, which is one of the main triggers. The other trigger, as I mentioned, take on some tea, it's always important, um, is humidity. So the only other real bit of kit that you're gonna need for this, other than a sharp knife, is some kind of spray bottle. And you can reuse ones that have been used before, that's absolutely fine, just make sure they're cleaned out properly beforehand. And all you want in this is just some water. Tap water is also absolutely fine for this, works totally fine, it doesn't need to be anything special, it doesn't need to be distilled or sterilized or anything like that. So just standard water is totally good and 
this process. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your spray bottle and you're just gonna give maybe three or four sprays onto the front of the kit there. And you're gonna do that about two or three times a day, every single day. And what you will notice over the course of the next few days, and this time can vary depending on which species, usually the oyster mushrooms is within about three days, three or four days of starting this process of exposing it and allowing oxygen in, you'll start to see tiny, tiny little kind of mini um, mushrooms, I suppose. But what they're actually, what the term for it is called primordial formation or pinheading. And so you might see some just tiny little pins starting to form on the top of the mycelium. And these are your first signs that you're starting to get your mushrooms growing. And you, all you need to do is just keep spraying every couple of days onto that area there at the front. And what that is doing is just keeping the humidity really nice and high. Mushrooms like really humid environments, like really we're trying to create about 85% humidity, but we don't need to be that accurate unless we're growing in like a professional grow room or something like that. So for this, this is absolutely fine. Just with a spray bottle, keep doing that every day. Now with oyster mushrooms, you want to harvest the mushrooms when the edge of the cap, so if you imagine this is like the edge of an oyster mushroom cap here and the cap's kind of curled around itself like this and as the mushroom grows, this cap slowly opens out and there's a point just before it goes completely flat when it's just got a tiny bit of down curl still on the edge of the cap, that is the perfect moment to harvest your mushrooms. And this will vary a bit depending on the conditions, so I can't give you an exact amount of days that this will take, but when that moment happens, you will know. And it's the same for grey oyster and the same for pink oyster and golden oyster as well. Or yet, sometimes it's called yellow oyster, but I like to call it golden oyster, which is also another name for it. Lion's mane, slightly different, exactly the same process. You just keep spraying the fruiting body. Spray the fruiting body, it will grow, and you'll get this big blob that kind of forms a kind of white blob. It's a very unusual mushroom, but absolutely amazing. Definitely my favorite mushroom to grow, hands down. But that one will grow out into a big round blob and eventually you'll start getting these small kind of tentacles, almost like tentacles or tendrils that start uh, growing onto it. And as the tendrils begin to elongate, and once they get to about, about let's say about a centimeter in length, that's the perfect time to harvest as well. But um, yeah, if you have any issues with this or you're unsure on things on what to do, or if you start having any issues with your kits, do just drop us a message. We always answer every email when it comes to um, having issues with growing. So yeah, just drop us a line and we'll be happy to help out. You send us some pictures of what's going on and I'll be able to direct you from then onwards. But that's really it for growing your first flush of mushrooms. So we know now, we now know when to harvest these mushrooms. In terms of harvesting, the best thing to do is to gain to get another sharp knife or the same sharp knife and you want to go just behind, so as flush as you can to this plastic at the back when they're ready to harvest and chop them off from the main substrate. Now it's better to take a tiny bit of the substrate with the fruiting body as well because what we don't want to do is leave any of the fruiting body attached to the kit because what will happen is it will start to rot essentially because it's gone over and then that will create bacteria and contaminants onto our mycelium, which can lead to the kits then not being able to produce future flushes and starting to rot. So we really wanna make sure, so definitely make sure you get all the material off from where the mushrooms were growing from from before. And if they, you end up taking a bit of the mycelium with it, of the back mycelium, that's absolutely fine. It will grow again off of the mycelium behind it. And it's actually probably safer to do that than accidentally leaving some of the fruiting body attached. With all of these mushrooms, there's a, there's a rest period in between. So usually around about two, sometimes three weeks where the, the organism needs to kind of reset itself. It's expended a lot of energy in producing this fruiting body for you. And it just needs a few moments of rest uh, to reset all of those things. But what you will notice eventually after a few weeks is that you start getting another new flush, a new group of mushrooms starting to grow from the same port as well. Uh, and you'll get a second one, exactly the same process, spraying two, three times a day, making sure it stays dry. If it looks like it's starting to dry out, which can happen sometimes, but particularly in the warmer summer months, then just up the amount that you're spraying it as well. Uh, with lines, mean you'll see it will start going a kind of browner, browner or darker color rather than white. Again, just up the spraying and it will recover from that and just keep spraying at a higher rate. 
Um, and then again, it goes, harvest that one, and then your third flush, and maybe even a fourth flush as well. I have known to get five flushes off of some of our kits sometimes on a good run. Um, and that's pretty much it. Only other things I would point out, mushrooms, they're very, they're pretty good at defending themselves against bacteria and contaminants and things like that. So um, you don't need to worry too much about keeping things particularly clean. Obviously make sure that the knife that you're using is clean and not covered in food waste, but it's gonna put food waste onto the kit. Uh, other things, maybe just making sure that the area where you're keeping your kit is nice and clean as well. Because again, just trying to make sure that we're trying to keep it as clean as we possibly can, but it doesn't need to be sterile. Like all of the materials that came inside the bag were sterilized originally, but past this point when we're fruiting into an actual open space, you don't actually need to worry about sterility really at that point. But again, good cleaning practice is always helpful uh, and just keeps the amount of bacteria which are naturally just floating around in the atmosphere at bay, but making sure that we're not intentionally adding loads more with, you know, for example, using a dirty knife. Um, and that's about it really. Um, once you've completely finished your kit and you're not getting any more flushes off of it, all the contents inside the block are completely compostable. Um, so you can empty them onto your compost pile or into your home composting or into your council compost bin if you don't have home composting. Cardboard can definitely all be recycled, the tape's recyclable as well. Uh, the only bit that isn't is the bag on the inside, uh, which can just, will have to go into normal waste facilities. But apart from that, everything else is completely recyclable on it. Um, so yeah, if you've got any other things that you wanna ask me, do just drop me a message or an email through our website. And yeah, enjoy growing all your delicious mushrooms. <laughs>